Topic 8.1, 8.2, intro to acids, and pH, pOH, strong acids and bases, important stuff, not hard. Um, we're still doing equilibrium. equilibrium. This, however, is not equilibrium because they're strong, all right? Um, share screen, uh, posted some stuff with Google Classroom that we will reference. You need to read your notes. I know I don't say that much. You need to read your notes. This this is the unit. All right, this is a great unit. But oh, it can confuse some students. Okay, so don't let that be you. Read your notes. Let me get to there. There we go. Okay, um, I am not going to reference this little diagram yet. Um, I just wanted because I'm going to be at the top of this page. So I'm actually going to scroll down here. There's some practice problems further down. All right, uh, let's see, first of all, intro acids, bases. All right, we know pH scale, zero to 14, seven neutral. Okay. Um, we typically Not always. Temp dependent, okay? We will see that pop up. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it. Okay. Um, okay. Um, all right, so we know acids donate H, right? We know all that stuff. We know bases. Donate OH or accept H plus ions, right? Absorb, take, uh, remove. Um, sorry, I'm just thinking of what else I might need to say before we get started. We know that strong versus weak is based off of percent dissociation, right? So the, if it's strong, it's 100% dissociation. Strong does not mean concentrated, all right? Concentrated versus dilute has to do with moles per liter is concerned with the moles of H or OH. Oops, that's not a negative per liter. So you can be a strong acid that is 100% dissociated, but you are very dilute. There's not a lot present. You could be a weak acid that is not very dissociated and be very concentrated. So that your pH is actually less than the pH of a strong acid. So we've got a play here between the strength and the concentration, okay? And lastly, just realize that acids have an excess of hydrogen ions, neutral, does not mean seven. Seven does not necessarily mean neutral. It is temperature dependent. Neutral means the H equals the OH. And if the pH is seven, but the H does not equal the OH, then it is not neutral. And if the, P, if the H does equal the OH at a pH of 6.5, then it is neutral, okay? That's what determines whether or not something is neutral. Not its pH, it's the relative amounts of H and OH, okay? Um, and if it's basic, we will have an excess of hydroxides. Cool. Let's talk about something else now, okay? Actually, let's look at this drawing. Um, this came from your notes. You have really good notes. 
All right, which diagram represents a relatively concentrated? So we're looking for concentrated weak, concentrated strong, assign relative strengths to the two remaining. All right, so why don't you look at it real quick? Okay, this is the water here, right? Okay, so this has lots of water relative this has lots of water relative this has less water and this has less water okay so they made that easy for us and um here's my hydrogen let's see how many of those we have over here one uh -huh. Let's see how many we have over here. One. Uh, let's see how many we have over here. One, two, three, four. Oh, they're all over the place. Okay. Right? They, they appear to be. Um, and here they also appear to be um, quite all, all over the place. So I think we just found the answers to our questions, okay? Those are our hydrogen ions. Which diagram is relatively concentrated, but it is weak? Well, that would be where we have this weak, only one has dissociated and there's less water. So that would be B. And I just told you why. There are many unionized molecules in a little bit of water. Many unionized molecules in a little bit of water. All right, and hopefully you've moved on and you have identified for yourself where is a concentrated strong acid. So concentrated means lots of particles and less water. Right, so that would be letter C there. All right, letter C, and that would be what would be the easier way. There's lots of ionized, lots of ionized acid, and not as much water. Okay, and then for the last two, assign relative strengths. So the last two would be A, that is weak. Lots of unionized molecules, and that is strong lots of ionized molecules. Okay, cool. Let's move on, okay? That's pretty much topic 8.1. pH, one more thing. A pH of 2 is 10 times more acidic than a pH of three and a hundred times more acidic than a pH of four, a thousand times more acidic than a pH of five. So if I forget to tell you that, just hold that, hold on to that, okay? I'm gonna make that smaller. Now let's look at a, a wealth of equations we're about to have at our fingertips, okay? And let us start with the KW which is the equilibrium constant for water. For the dissociation of water. Equilibrium constants are temperature dependent. So K at 25 degrees, that's KW by the way, right? not any K, KW at 25 degrees, 
for H2O, KWE is H2O is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. This is, I'm not going to say dissociation, it's actually referred to as auto happening on its own. Ionization. Okay, water is molecular, but it behaves in ionic ways as well, right? Um, so it will itself ionize. What does that look like? To a, an extremely small extent, ionizes to an extremely small extent. Extremely, I don't know if I spelled that right, extent, you're right, to the negative 14th. That's, that's a very, very small number. But what that tells us is that liquid water itself ionizes to a small extent. All right. And what you could see is remember liquids do not um liquids do not belong in ice charts right right initially we would have zero zero plus x plus x x x right so at 25 degrees kw well, Kw is always equal to H times OH, all right? At 25 degrees, Kw is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. That is equal to X, X equal to X squared, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th equals X, equals the concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide in equilibrium with liquid water. They are equal. They're for neutral. It's not neutral because the pH is seven. It is neutral because they are equal. Okay. So, what are all of these equations? Let's bust out our equations. pH equals negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Well, according to this, my hydrogen ion, hydrogen ion concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh. So the pH of water at 25 degrees Celsius, right? Equals negative log 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh. A lot of these you will not be have a calculator for. You'll see a lot of this reference in MCQs. If I am going to get the negative log of a number that has an exponent, my answer will be very close to that exponent with no times 10. Because this is a one, and it'll be positive. My pH equals seven. My point is you have to learn to do this in your head. You have to learn to predict. Is it gonna be seven less than seven greater than seven? As this number, as, as this number increases your base value, the pH value decreases, okay? So what am I saying? I'm saying if I needed to get the pH and I don't have a calculator of the negative log 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, then I will predict my pH to be negative four less than. So I now know that it is between a pH of three and four and probably closer to four. The higher this gets, the closer to three it gets, okay? 
All right. Let's check that. Let's do that on negative log 2.5 exponent negative 4 equals 3.6. Okay, so I even guessed that it was closer to the 4 than the 3 based on the value of this. Okay, you need to practice that. All right, um, your worksheet's going to say predict and then calculate. So do that. All right, okay. So we have this equation here, pH equals negative log H. Well, guess what, guys? There's another similar equation. That is pOH equals negative log OH. All right, well, for water at 25 degrees Celsius, that is the negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh. We can do that in our head. That's pOH equals seven, all right? So um, that's cool. POH is the same thing. It's just in regards to hydroxides. However, you cannot use a PO, POH on the pH scale. You must be comparing pH values to the pH scale and not POH values. We've got one equation at our fingertips. Actually, we've got two. We've got KW equals hydrogen times hydroxide. And we are usually left to assume that KW is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th, okay? And less told otherwise, it is, all right? Okay, um, we've got calculating pH, we've got calculating pOH. We've got a couple more. It is true that pH plus pOH will always equal 14. That's assuming we are at 25 degrees Celsius. Shouldn't be an issue, okay? It is also true that if you need to know the concentration of OH, then you need to take 10 and raise it to your negative pOH, okay? And if you want the concentration of hydrogen then you need to take 10 and raise it to your negative pH. Um, yeah, all right, okay, let's finish this up. Task 8.2 from your notes, number one, calculate the pH of a solution of 0.30 molar hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Therefore, it dissociates completely. Initially, I have 0.030 molar and none of this. Change, I lose all of it. Now you don't need to write this out. I'm just trying to give you a visual of what's really happening here. So I see that all I need to do is get the negative log of my hydrogen ion concentration, which will be, we're going to predict it. Let's put it into scientific notation to help us predict it. And what will we predict? We predict it'll be around two, oops, and we predict it'll be a little bit less than two. Okay, so let's negative log that sucker. Negative log, 3.0 second E negative two. In fact, we have 1.52 pH equals 1.52. And note about sig figs. There is one number after my concentration, after my decimal in my concentration. No, 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 no. There are two sig figs in my concentration. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Two sig 
figs in concentration, therefore two numbers after decimal in pH value. Ugh. Okay, this is the unit, guys. Okay, okay, so we have our pH, we have our pH. Um, and we predicted it too, right? We predicted about where it would be because we're learning to do that. Good, let's do this again. Calculate the pH of a 0 0.010 molar solution of lithium hydroxide. All right. Lithium hydroxide is strong. Lithium completely dissociates from where it's an alkali metal. So this is strong. All of it will react. So make sure you pay attention to your mole ratios, right? If, if there was a two here, I would need to account for that, but there's not. Okay, now I've got options here. Um, I need the pH, pH equals negative log H. Um, I do not have H, however, I do have OH, all right? So I can do one of two things. I can say that OH equals KW over H and plug one times 10 to the negative 14 in. I'm sorry, I'm looking for H, I'm sorry. Duh. H <laughs> equals KW over OH and I can plug one times 10 to the negative 14th and over my OH. Just make that, let's put that in scientific notation, one times 10 to the negative second. Okay, so that, you know, I can read that. That's negative 14 minus negative two is one times 10 to the negative 12th. pH equals negative log. Um, one times 10 to the negative 12th. You do not need a calculator. This is a one, therefore the pH is equal to the exponent in its positive form. Um, the other thing I could have done, right? What I did was I used this equation to get H. Um, I could have said POH equals negative log OH. POH equals negative log 1.0 times 2 to the negative 2, 10, 10 to the negative 2. POH equals 2. P, O, oops, PH equals 14 minus POH. PH equals 14 minus 2. PH equals 12. So all of these equations, they, they're all available to you all the time. And you often have more than one option. <laughs> I just, I start writing big, didn't I? Um, number three, calculate the hydrogen. Remember that this is the, called the hydronium ion. Remember that? Um, hydronium ion, it is essentially the same Thing as H plus, all right? Same thing. So pH equals 4.32. Look at that work, y'all. Okay, so I'm going to go H plus equals 10 to the negative 4.32. Right, because my equation is H plus equals 10 to the negative pH. Um, so if you don't know what to do there, it's really not a big deal. Just go to your log button. And up above it, you should have like a 10X. So that's what I'm gonna hit. Let me turn it on. I'm gonna go second log negative 4.32. Don't look at your calculator. What is this going to be? This is going to be something that is times 10 to the what? Five, negative five. 
I'm going to guess, equals oh, 4.79 times 10 to the negative 5. Once again, I could have no, I could be doing some mental math right now if I needed to. Okay. And then the last one, wow, look at all that big old writing. Um, the last one, calculate the pH of a solution made by two grams, KOH, 250 milliliters. All right. 2.00 grams, KOH, 200. 50.0 milliliters H2O, 2.00 grams KOH, grams to moles. Oh my gosh, I have that right here. 56.91 grams for every one mole. Um, that's going to give me 0 0.3514 moles of KOH equals 0 0.0. .0. 3514, <clears throat> excuse me, moles of OH. And I need to divide that by my volume is 0 0.250 liters. That gives me a concentration that is 0 0.1406. Um, and that is for hydroxide. I am asked for what the pH. Um, so let's do this. Let's get the pOH. I think that's easier. Equals negative log of the hydroxide 0 0.1406 and actually I have that value here cool I didn't realize that was right there equals <coughs> excuse me 0 0.852 therefore the pH is equal to 14 minus 0 0.852 and the pH is equal to 13.15 um, very basic, as you would expect with a potassium hydroxide, right? All that hydroxide's going into the solution. Okay, guys. Good. Good. This is simple stuff. It won't get that hard. <laughs>